Welcome, welcome. Man, you guys look really good in that equity shirt. Want to say welcome to our fall 2022 convocation. Certainly excited about starting a new academic year. And a couple of recognition I want to make before we get started. Want to thank the folks at Red Stick for giving us the opportunity to have this convocation here. We want to do something, something very, very different. So if you see the staff of Red Stick, go out and acknowledge them for allowing us to come in their facility. I want to thank the, the uh, Convocation Committee for all the work that they have done and everybody that played a role on getting our convocation up, setting up the stage, and the work that's been done. Megan Williams, where you at? Megan Williams. Come on, Megan. Want, want to thank Megan Williams for co chairing for chairing this event. Did an awesome job, Megan. Thank you. We appreciate you. Whatever. It's great seeing all of you today. It's great to welcome you back to a new academic year. I know the past two years we have been able to have a communication in person because of the COVID and some other challenges, but it's really, really great to see many of you have, that I haven't seen in person for years. I look forward to a great productive and a great year serving as your chancellor, but also on the work we're gonna to do to continue to improve our community and work with the students, uh, those that we serve and all our constituents that we serve. So you're probably wondering why you got the shirt on with equity. You know, there's a bunch of folks uh, throughout the country, and I was in D.C. about a month ago with a president roundtable, and the, the, the thing that is going around that any, every, everybody knows now is about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. But we want to focus on equity, and I want to talk to you about equity, but throughout this presentation, we're going to have a long talk about equity, what we need to do to support equitable solutions, but also be an equitable and prosperous community. There's a great deal of challenge in our country today because of inflation, uh, the demand for, for gas prices, certainly they're going down, but certainly for food and other goods and services. And so most students are not coming to community college or college in general because of equity. And pretty much it's those folks are not making an equitable opportunity to have better wages and better earnings. And so we want to be an equitable and prosperous community on the work that we do at BRCC. We do great work in the community. Every day I'm constantly being reminded of the value that we provide to our customers, to our students, but certainly to our business and industry partners. We must make sure that we continue to strive for equity and make sure everyone can be successful when it comes to salary and wages, career opportunities, and opportunities to matriculate through the college. And we're going to talk about that a great deal today in this presentation. And so I look forward to having conversations with each of you individually, as a unit, as a team, on what our strategy on how we're going to address building an equitable and prosperous community. Our story, over the past two years, we did a lot. I don't know if your supervisors have talked to you about all the work that we did over the past two years in the COVID, right after COVID, even up until now. We have done some great work to support this community to support our state, but more importantly, to support students. We have even done great work supporting each other, being good teamwork, good colleagues, to work along. I know it's been difficult and I know it's been challenging, but many of you have endured. I know we have lost loved ones, we have lost friends and colleagues and the like, but we have rose to the occasion to be able to tell our story on the great thing that we have done as a college and as we've done together. So let's talk about those for a few minutes. We provide a professional development for faculty. And some will say, why we have that on the convocation agenda? Why is that important? Because if we're not investing in our faculty, we're not putting the resources to better serve our students, who are our customers. But we know during the COVID transition, there were many faculty who struggled with doing online training, online teaching. And we needed to provide professional development to be able to better serve our students. Three years ago, I talked about the word excellence, and we wanted to be excellent and make sure we provided the service to our faculty to engage those students. And I have not had one single complaint from a student. I have some complaints with students, but not about teaching modality or issues in the classroom, which is great. I get a lot of emails. You can imagine as a chance for students got grievances and issues about a whole bunch of things. It was not about faculty engagement or supporting them in the classroom. So give yourself a pat on the back and applause.
We created a virtual student center, the first college to do it. All the other 11 college copied us. I'm telling you the facts. We were the first college to create a virtual student center to support our students with access while they was at home during the pandemic and even beyond. You still get email today that talks about the virtual student center, about what's going on, who's getting hired, who's in this class. We created that. You did that. Many of the faculty and staff created those platforms, and the leadership that we have on our team was excellent to provide those solutions to serve our students, from mental health counseling, to food insecurity, to curriculum issues, to challenge with financial aid, you name it. We heard it all, but we rose to the occasion by creating the virtual student center. We invested in synchronous classroom equipment, but not only just synchronous, if, you've been, if you haven't been back to campus, I implore you to start looking around all the infra infrastructure upgrades that we have made to our campus. We even have robots, right Raven? We got robots that can sit down with you and talk <laughs> and share about things that the robots in their robot world, whatever that is. But, <laughs> but we invest in those things to be able to better serve our students, to prepare them for the future in the world of work. And so I'm so proud of the Mashbury Rooms the technology and the infrastructure that we build to be able to better serve students. You get it, folks? You get the pattern? You may, not think, it's, you may think it's small, but these are major transformational things that Baton Rouge Community College is doing. We support our healthcare partners, not only with goods and services by, if you, if you recall, we donated PPE equipment and a whole bunch of things. People donated their time to support our hospital partner who was on the front line, our healthcare partners who was on the front line. But we also supplied them with the talent. We increased our enrollment in many of our allied nursing health programs to be able to serve them with students. We know many of the people that work, the employees that work for our healthcare partners would burn out or tired or left the field. But we rose to the occasion, Dr. Dennis. Thank you and your team for the work that you do in all our nursing and our health professionals. <laughs> Not only that, but all of you as individuals, you donated to the foundation. You donate it to your community. We provide a Wi-Fi access to students. And some of you, those are transformational things that we do, and we do together, and we do it well. We created seamless pathways to allow students to matriculate. Two, two major issues of why students are not successful in college or don't complete college, time and money. I'm going to say it again. There are two major issues or barriers that students do not complete college. When I was going to college, even up until now, I'm a little bit older today with my gray hair, but the two things, time and money, is still the major factor of student success, student completion, and student graduation. But we rose to the occasion. We provided senior pathways to allow them to get into basic credential in their first semester, our six-week training in the credit team, with Dr. Myers and her team. Great work for our workforce team bringing different things to the table to be able to train our, our industry partners to provide the young men and women that we need. And I'm only naming a few, but all of y'all played a role in this and a part of this. And I'm so humble and honored to be your chancellor. I'm so excited about the work that we do because I may get the pat on the back as your leader, but I always make sure if you know people that know me that tell that I didn't do it, it was people out here, the faculty and staff of Baton Rouge Community College. Thank you. So during the two years, during COVID, we did our part. I hope Brandon, Dr. Tyson don't get mad at me. <laughs> but we volunteered to show our community that we got vaccinated, right? What better way to rise and show your community on leadership than to show them that we took this serious, we took the pandemic serious. And so we rose to the occasion. And all of you who, who gave blood, who got your vaccinations, to support our community. We did our part. Voss is funded by you. I saw Dr. Nero earlier. How you doing, Clarence? To tell the story about mental health, but also what the students endured during the COVID, the challenge that their family had or they had endured coming to school. No other college is doing this in this state, I guarantee you. We're telling the story that's going to be transformational to our community, to our students, to everyone we serve that's going to resonate forever. 
because we get to tell how we can be better, things that we overcome and things that we endure. Thank you, Professor Nero. And yes, we don't talk about this often, but I'm gonna keep talking about it to our lead BRCC. We have the best student athletes and coaches in the state. Where my coaches at? Our lady, our lady basketball team, Lady Bears, was conference champion. Coach Lee, wherever you at? Well, yeah, Coach Lee, Coach of the Year at BRCC. I tease my colleagues because they don't have this what we have. And I tease them in the spirit of jokingly, but also I'm very competitive if you know me. And Coach Lee know the story. But thank you, Coach. Thank you, all the coaches. Like all my coaches who do a good job supporting our student, student athletes. But folks, we got some work to do for our student athletes. I need to see more of you at the ball games, in the stand, supporting this. Because this is BRCC. It's not athletics, it's BRCC. So I challenge all of you to start coming out and support our coaches on the work that they do, preparing young men and women for the real world of work. Some of them make it to the trans to the Ford University. Some of them go on to play in the minor leagues and those sort of things. But at the end of the day, they become good people by the work we do collectively. So thank you, coaches, for the work that you do on behalf of our student athletes. We provide the career fairs to be able to tell the story on what BRCC can do for you, but also help you find a job, to prepare you for that job, to engage you for that job, to make sure you're ready for that job. You see the picture? We even had a benefit concert. The benefit concert that we raised money to talk about mental health issues. We had Tamar Braxton to come out and talk about our struggles, to share with people who was going through some things, and we all go through them. I go through them just as well as anyone else. But to come out and share her story of her mental health, challenge, mental health challenges and issues. And she signed autograph, and she talked to the students. And it was based on reflection on what we can do together and how we can solve our challenges if we work together. We even peddle for peace. Everyone knows what's going on in Baton Rouge the gang violence uh, throughout the state of Louisiana and throughout the country. So we partner with our city councilmen to appeal for peace. I see some of you in this room who's able to be in that, uh, who's part of the peace, who's able to be in that, that bank activity and ride with us to show our cause to support our community in peddling for peace. Every step of the way, folks, we are doing and answering the call for the people of Louisiana and for the people of Baton Rouge. We're doing it. Thank you. Fall Festival. Yeah, we let our hair down a little bit, but we get right back at it afterwards. We had a great Fall Festival. It was engaging to see many of you out there with the Second Line Band and the band, brass band from New Orleans and the, all the activities that we were doing to support student success and the success that we have done. We have done a lot the past two years of sharing our story, providing our story, of how BRCC culture is one of the best, if not the best, in the state. This is the one that's really serious, that we have to take serious, but we have to give it some thought. Never in my imagination, and I grew up in the projects in the ghetto. Many of you heard my story, the fight in me. But I didn't have an issue with food insecurity. So never did I have the, the challenge of hearing students say, I don't have food. I had a young lady to write me. So I have a bad enough gas to get to class, yet I don't have food and I got two children. A single mother out there with two kids, barely got a tank of gas to get to school, but no food. Come on, we can do better than that. This country is better than that. But yet again, BRCC rose to the occasion. Somebody better clap. Come on with me now. <laughs> We provided a food pantry with our partners from the food bank in Healthy Blue and Focus Food. You did the work, but it get back to our students and they're gonna be, have opportunity to have food. But food, is, food insecurity is a big issue on our campus and our college. 
and our students struggle with it. And maybe some of us may struggle with it, but we are here to support you. You probably saw the advertisement, our PR marketing team did a great job, a high degree of success, but also a high degree of impact. I was recently, and kids that don't laugh at me, I was recently in the community with some friend of mine having a drink, and they would say, you the chest from BRCC? I said, yes, yes ma'am, yes sir. And we just talked about BRCC. While we talk, I'm looking in the TV screen, there I am on the television screen, talking about a high degree of impact. While I'm laughing and joking, but people are actually seeing our commercial and saying, man, what are y'all doing at BRCC? I'm always hearing you guys in the media, in the news, talking about how you want to support students. How you want to open doors to successful careers. Meeting the workforce needs and contributing to the economy. We provide a high degree of value and impact back to this community and back to the state. So much so, we have some analysis and a group to do some economic study. We provide 300 million back to this region and economy. Who could tell that story of what we provide? So when you go out, when you go to church, you go to your community meetings, you're in the community meetings and you're wearing those shirts and someone asks, tell them about the value you provide, the work that we do, how we change people's lives to create better futures. Talk about it, it's true, it's fact. We provide a greater impact, a high degree of impact for our community. We provide access in many of our high demand programs. Students come to us for a variety of reasons, but we provide opportunity for them and the goals for them to change their life in the course of what they want to do and what they want to go in life. We allow that for all the access that we provide to our community as we go forward. One of the major accomplishments that I want to thank all of my student services team and all of the deans who played a role in this. Pathway to a Brighter Future. You may have heard that, but you also may have heard that negatively on the news because there's a group of folks who don't think high school students can learn college curriculum. That's your son and daughters. They're telling you that your son and daughters cannot learn in high school, college courses and be successful. That's a lie. You have my permission to say that. My mama didn't let me say it to me and my brother, but that's a lie. So if my mama here, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> Students are capable of doing everything that we work with them to do, and, they, and they're very smart. And we have to start treating them as such. I think more folks are afraid of the challenge or change than doing the actual work to do. We did it. Every student in EBR is going to lead with a pathway to BRCC. You should see all of the ECL agreement that we have across Greater Baton Rouge that are going to impact families and lives. Could you imagine if someone told you guys, and I don't want to tell your age, but if you, could you imagine 20 years ago someone say that you're going to lead with a high school diploma, an industry-based credential, technical diploma, and a social degree. And on top of that, when you finish, you're going to get a starting job paying you $47,000. You're going to say, you're kidding, you're lying. That's what's happening. This is game changing for the state, and we are leading this cause. Look at our data. We're going to share our data with you so you can see the lives that we're going to impact and affect with this dual enrollment, this pathway to a brighter future. We're not doing it in EBR. We're doing it all around our school district and our charter schools and our private schools. All of them will come to the table each day with developing partnership. But you guys are doing the work, and folks need to hear your story on what the value and impact that you provide every day back to our community. Could you imagine someone in Banks or Zion City getting an industry-based credential in P-TECH or nursing and a credential to go back, make more money than mom and dad ever made? This is transformational. Yes, yeah, clap. This is transformational. So don't listen to the news media and the story. What you need to be asking is, what solution do you have? What can you do? So I'm proud of the work that all of my student services folks and the deans and all our staff 
and the effort that they put in, my leadership team put in to making sure that these kind of pathways provide opportunities for students. That's what we do, and we do it well. We provide access. Our partnerships, I'm only going to highlight a few, several are significant, but several that I'm going to highlight. We got tons of partnerships. The biggest one, you probably heard before, one of the work that we did when I first got here is with our Late of the Lake, $12 million donation. The largest donation in the history of this school, $12 million. Now, if you think someone gives you $5, imagine if they give you $12 million, what they ask you to do. But this is an investment. But people are going to invest in people that they see doing good work. So this is a tribute to you and the work that you do every day, supporting the men and women, for someone to give you $12 million. And I didn't know these folks until I got here three years ago and started building a relationship. And I started passionately talking about all the good work that we do at BRCC. And they took a gamble on us and gave us $12 million to support our nursing ally health program. Thank you. We're partnering with the Baton Rouge Police Department, helping with recruits and help bring in new officers who are better trained, better skilled, and other activities we're supporting them on. These are major partnerships because now we want community police in our community to be educated, to be able to address some of the issues that's in our community that are not criminal. They're criminal because we go in the community and think it's criminal, but these are individuals. These are human beings. And as a way we need to conduct ourselves as officers and as people to better serve our community. So I'm proud of that partnership. One of our biggest partnerships that's been around a year is our North Baton Rouge Industrial Training Initiative with Exxon Mobil. No one has had this partnership across this country. I've been in the workforce development for 21 years. We have never had this type of partnership where one of the major energy companies is footing the bill for the most part on, on providing services to folks on the north side of Baton Rouge who can go work directly at ExxonMobil or the contractors. We have over 100 contractors. Over 100 contractors who are hiring our students who are putting them to work to be able to take care of them family. These are transformational work and game-changing things that we're doing with a partner such as ExxonMobil. And our last, I shouldn't say our last, but our most recent activity, College of Church. You know, we often hear sometimes about students not coming to college or not going to school and so forth. So I say, why don't we bring it to our community partners, to our faith-based partners who talk about empowerment and uplifting the community. I remain hopeful that this kind of initiative will work. But a little joke here, and for you Christian folks, it's a little side of humor. The, the day we announced the college to the church, and we announced it in previous months leading up to build this relationship with Pastor Fred Smith and Shallow Smith and the mayor's office. We had about five or six pastors. But when we announced it, I had about 20 pastors calling me. So you can't tell me that our clergy don't compete. <laughs> I'm just telling you, people seeing the work that we want to do and they want to jump on this activity, this opportunity. But we need our faith-based partners out there in the community to help us carry out our mission. And we're doing that at their facility. You don't have to come here. We know, and you know, there are folks in our family and folks in our community who are afraid to come to BRCC. They know we can do about most of that. But if we put it in the community where most folks go to church, most folks are faith, give them opportunity to have access to our mission. I'm so excited about that initiative and that partnership. This is the part where we're going to call to do to all of you guys and myself, but certainly all of you. What has changed? I'm here to tell you a whole bunch of change in the last two years. And what we have learned, some the hard way, but we have learned. But what has changed? Our society is changing. We need to be able to change. If you think BRCC is, a, is still a traditional college, we are not. If you want to be at a traditional college, we won't be. We cannot meet the need of our citizens in the traditional way. People learn different. People interact different. 
There are different races, different ethnicities, different sexual genders, and you name it. We have to have a different approach to be able to serve our community and how we get there. And we're going to take all of us plugging and pulling in the same direction with solutions to be able to serve our community. Or else with BRCC and many of the colleges in this state will not exist. We have to be able to change. We have to think differently on how we serve people. That don't mean we have any structure. That don't mean we don't have rigor. That don't mean we don't be fair. And that don't mean we be firm. It means all of that and above. But at the end of the day, there are some practices and processes that we must change as a college to be able to effectively serve those students. So let's talk about those things. What I call the great opt-out. They want me to get out my speech, so I'll be done. I ain't gonna be done. So it's just a the devil there, but I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> so I call it the great opt-out. If you had to ask yourself, why are individuals opting out of college? Certainly during this time, we know because of financial being, well-being, they need to take care of themselves and their family. I already mentioned to you about the two barriers, time and money. But there's a great opt-out going on in the college, go, excuse me, going on in our country where students are opting out of college. Okay? We must be able to address that and change to be able to solve that. Then, there are the non-consumers. All of my student services know these people. The one that's uninterested, unavailable, hard to reach, right? That you can talk to over and over. But those are folks who need our help. We just need to challenge them in a different way. We must do things different to be able to support our students and our community going forward. We are MJ Foster. And if you haven't heard about MJ Foster, thank all our legislative delegation and our governor for signing into law that's going to provide a promise for those of 21 years of age to be able to access our mission, to go to college basically for free for those who qualify. And that's going to come a whole different population of demographics of students that we got to be prepared for. We must be prepared for. Finally, organization confusion and matriculation issue. This is going to be a sore one for many, and I'm going to talk about this on the end of this presentation. The way we organize traditional college is not working anymore. We cannot continue to have silos and buckets. When someone comes in enrollment and you say, you need to go talk to the people over there in adult education. I hear it all the time. Oh, that's in the workforce. You need to go down the street to a Canadian camp if you have Mid City or Fraser or Central. You're sending someone to drive across town. Now, if you're sending me to drive across town and I'm from poverty, I ain't driving over there. We lost a student, right? Organization confusion, matriculation issues happen because we embed silos deep within our culture. And we have to be able to address that and change going forward. We must address those issues to have a solution to address the great opt out. Next, pay attention to the margins, those equity shirts. Who do we serve and why? I'm going to keep repeating this throughout this presentation. Pay attention to the margins. Who do we serve? You're going to be shocked. Now, I'm going to go in three areas called the access gap, the student gap, and the outcomes gap. So let's talk about the access gap. That's a great deal of students, that's a great deal of students and individuals in our community that are not aware of college, don't know what college is all about. We call them first time freshmen in many cases, but there are some beyond first time freshmen who don't know anything about college awareness. That's an equity issue. Pay attention to the margins. Academic preparation. We know the story. We have placements and all these development education courses we work so hard to change. But there's still a group of people who are not prepared to come to college. But those are the folks we're going to be serving. Pay attention to the, to the, mar to the equity, to the margins. College and career awareness. There's a group of folks who are coming to BRCC, taking courses that don't lead to a high wage or living wage. Did you hear me? Everybody got quiet there. There are folks who are coming to BRCC, taking courses and in programs that does not lead to a living wage. Not that your program is not important. Not that the work that you do is not important. But we got to do better for our citizens, for our state to improve. You want to stop the gun violence and the violence in our country? Educate more people. Put them in training programs where they can make some money. 
I was in D.C. at the President of the Round Table. I'm the only black man in the room, and all the other folks, the Caucasian folks, sitting at the table, and they're giving a presentation. And I don't mean anything bad about this. And they were telling me about Latino men and black men, or why they're not enrolling in college or going to college anymore. And they're telling me all that stuff. I'm just sitting there, he had all kind of answers. And I'm saying, I got two sons that are 21 and 26. And every time I talk to them, it's all about money. <laughs> and my wife and I make a good living. They don't have to worry about too much. But every time I hear them, they're talking about money. So guess what? I start going to the community in Baton Rouge. And where I live, and even in my, in my house in Lafayette. I start going around the community and talking to young people. With, and that was the number one thing. I need to make some money, Dr. Smith. I can't sit in your classroom. We need to be able to tell them about our programs, make them aware of those programs, and how we better serve them going forward. Pay attention to the margins. Financial assistance. Our, is Miracle Davis here? Well, Miracle's in D.C. Now, she's not here. Her team are, are doing some great work of being cross-trained in multiple avenues of financial, aid, of financial services. It is not just about Title IV anymore. Remember, I told you we're not traditional college no more. So we need to talk about other parts of funding. Because guess what? When I call, my aunt called me and she want to get in college, or my niece or my cousin want to get in college, the first thing I'm going to say, how much I got to pay? <laughs> well, I don't qualify for fair pay or my brother, true story, was incarcerated, had felony convictions, can't get pay -off. Okay? But there are other resources that these folks can get, and we need to tell our story. Pay attention to the margin. Application support. Now, I joke at this with my colleagues around the state, but we got almost a 30-page application process. may not be 30 pages. I'm exaggerating. But it's difficult. <laughs> but it's difficult. You follow where I'm going. It's difficult for me to manage. Imagine someone else. What do we really need from a Jane Doe or Larry or Sue or Sarah or John? What do we really need from them? Do we need all that information? Probably not. Application support and assistance is still an issue for many of our students, and we need to pay attention to the margins, the equity, who's been successful, who's not. And when you see the data, and you're not going to show it today, but you're going to see it, you're going to be alone. The next student gaps, course selections. Students are still having trouble selecting courses because their friend going in and say, I got an easy professor. <laughs> Right? We know what they're doing. Pay attention to the margins. A sense of belonging. It is not our institution. We're just here that can't do it to lead it and help people get through it. It's our constituents, our community, and our students. I don't own anything. I heard people fussing over computers. And it's a state computer. <laughs> really? So pay attention to the belonging, who belongs in college, and share that with them. Everyone is entitled to education. Pay attention to the margin. Basic needs support. Now, this is a tough one. All of you, as I said earlier, rose to the occasion during the pandemic. Never did I thought that we had to pay for somebody food, water bill, gas, electricity, Wi-Fi. Our students are coming with basic needs support. And we have to be able to figure it out. And if we don't figure out, some other institution is going to grab and they're going to figure it out for them. So we need to have plans and solutions to be able to address that. That's the work that we got to continue to do. Pay attention to the margins of who that is from equity. Career transfer counseling. We need to be able to tell young men and women the value that we provide in our career transfer services and the counseling that we do. Retention and completion. Okay. Pay attention to the margin. Who's who retaining? Who's completing? When I got here in 2019, and I shared this with Convocation, I shared it with Dr. Cole if he's in the room, the BRCC graduation rate was 16%. The national average is 30%. That ain't, that's not even good. If you got 30%, you just like me when I was in school. <laughs> 30%. 
but we was at 16%. So we weren't even up to the national average. So that means we had work to do. And many of them were just processes, things that we had to change that we did do. Today, we're over 26%. 26%. Pay attention to the margins, and we're doing it. We're doing it. But those kind of things, we got to continue to address. Finally, the outcome gaps. We have a number of folks who we call the withdrawal stopout. They're withdrawing and stopping, or I get that next year. Or I come back in six months. Life's happened. Life happened. I'm telling you, life happens. I said it three times. Because when you know what's going to happen when you stop out of anything, the chance of you coming back for many, for the masses is less than none. Pay attention to the margin. Bachelor's degree attainment, yes. We transfer students to the four university. Now, I got a few data increments of what that percentage looks like, but I don't know for sure. So we got to do a better job of paying attention to the margin. How many of our students transfer to our four year and get their bachelor's degree? It's embarrassing that they come back re-enrolled and they went to a four year and didn't get their bachelor degree. That's on us too. Not just the four year. If we're going to be better going forward and address the great opt-out and address the bachelor degree attainment, we need to make sure we follow them when they're getting their bachelor degrees and onward to the job market. That's our commitment to those students. And sharing the career opportunities. Pay attention to the margin. We need to be sharing about the career opportunity that are high wage and high demand value opportunities out there in the community. We do that, but we need to do better. The, the last one, the salary outcomes. That's some data that's disturbing about BRCC graduates. And I'm going to share it because I've said this when I was in Washington, D.C., and I said this in the chancellor meeting just, week, just a few weeks ago with the rest of the chancellor. We need to be intentional on those who need us the most. Pay attention to the margins. We need to be intentional to those who need us the most. On average, a Caucasian student leaves Baton Rouge Community College making $78,000. That's great. We've done a great job, right? Absolutely. We're supposed to do that for all our students. But an African-American student leaves with $36,000 on average. We have to pay attention to the margin, folks. What is the difference between our Caucasian student and our African American student? Surely you can say color, maybe gender, but not the service we provide. No, no way. Pay attention to the margin. We must do a better job of making sure all of our students leave with the opportunity to earn high wages. And they're not. That's the reason why you wear no equity shirt. We got work to do still. Where we're we headed. I'm going to be concluding in a few minutes, but where we're headed, this is the good part. This is the part where I told you where well, you're going to come in and help support this. Organizational change. We got to get rid of some of those silos. We got to get rid of some of the things that inhabited that traditional colleagues have done to be able to serve the institution. Some changes I'm going to make and some changes I need you to make. We can do this together or I can do it on my own and say, hey, you got to do this. But in many cases, we talk about those plans and engage with each other. I've always, always been an inclusive leader, and I'll continue to be that. But in many ways, if we're not getting it, I have to do my job and act. There are some organizational changes that we have to make in our college, in our divisions, in our unit. And your supervisors are going to be talking about that, too. And if they're not, you need to be talking about that with them. And you need to be riding to the occasion to be that supervisor. You get my point? Developing a bench, leadership depth. We can't do it with just a few on the executive team in the cabinet. Everyone will have a chance to lead here, and I always have. But we must continue to develop the talent and the depth to be able to better serve our community and our students. And we're looking for leaders. I'm hungry for new environment innovative leaders, creative, who can think conceptually because we live in a thinking man world now that we got to be able to think and adjust to things that are going to affect our college. Strategic finance. I laugh at this every time I see this one. 
When I got the BRCC, the old adage was, you can never get any money unless you turn something in and get rid of something. Whoever made that, awful. It is. I never heard that prep practice in my life. We're not going to spend any money unless you go over and do this and give up that. So what they're telling you is we're not spending the money because we don't believe in you. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. What they're telling you, they don't believe in you. And I'm not here to cast any of my predecessors, but Dr. Willie Smith believe in each one of you and the work that we can do. Yeah, we're going to have some challenges. You're going to disagree with me. That's part of life. But I believe in every single individual. And here's what the strategic finance is going to look like. If it pertains to access and student success, we're going to find a way to finance that puppy. If it pertains to creating better access and student success, we're going to find a way to finance it. If it had to come out of my salary, it's the right thing to do. So you get a chance to challenge your supervisor respectfully on ideas to better, create, to better provide access to students and uh, to better be able to, to make sure they're successful when they leave. And we need to invest in that, and we will. We already talked about this, but innovative technology. We have to have technology that's capable of doing some things. I understand that's a new uh, adaptive software that student services are getting, uh, Navigate, Edify, those sort of things. There's going to be other software and technology that we need to be able to do our job smarter. We don't need a manual process that you're behind the keyboard all day. We got software that can handle some of those things. But most folks say it's a threat to my job. It's been a threat if you ain't doing anything. <laughs> right? Get the software and let the software work for itself, and we'll figure out the rest of it as we take the job security. Do your part. Future focus program. This is a big one. Everybody in Louisiana love oil and gas. I get it all the time. Love oil and gas. But when there's a war, that's a pandemic. Can't get nobody out there on them platform. All the gas was down, gas prices was high. Look at the war we just had with, with Russia and Ukraine, how high gas prices is. We need to be able to adapt. We need to be able to change. Electrical vehicles. But nobody want to do that in Louisiana because we're dominated by oil and gas. So I challenge the oil and gas people. How are you going to support the men and women of this state where they can't work and you're laying them out by masses because oil and gas is down? We got to think different about those programs for our community, for our students, for our family members, and for what's best for our state. And finally, equity scorecard. You have your equity shirts on for a reason. We're going to have an equity scorecard that you're going to be able to measure. When I say pay attention to the margin, you're going to be able to measure who's been successful, who's not. And we're going to talk about it constructively. How do we get certain population of students to where other students are at? What program we need to be developing to get folks in better wages and better earnings activity? What structure we need to change, organizational change, to get rid of the silos to better serve our students? The equity scorecard is going to score us. It's the work that we're going to do. And we're going to do that together. And finally, employees as customers. Have you ever heard that? Who ever heard that? Employees as customers. You know, when I got here, we talked about silence consent. If you didn't say anything, you consented to follow. Follow one of the best things to do in many cases because we still need to push others to do some things. But no more. You're treated just like customers now. We, you have value. As employees of Baton Rouge Community College, you provide value. <laughs> and let's talk about those things, what I mean by providing value. College investment. When you leave out here today, or next week, or next month, or later in the semester, call around your colleagues and ask how many of them have got raises three years in a row, three years since I've been here, you got an equity increase or you got a, a, a raise. Not many of our colleagues can do that, right? So I want to thank my academic and my finance team and everyone that made this happen for the work that they do to make sure that this college is in line with some principles to be able to support all of you 
And we're going to continue to do that. If Dr. Cole in here, stand up. I promise you that. If every year since I'm here, we do what we need to do, we will make sure we ensure raises. Didn't I say that? Every year is my commitment to the work that you guys do. Now, we had to work for it. It was some challenges, but we got there. Equity increases. Someone sitting on the next side of you, you came in the same time they did, making more money than you. <laughs> that what happened at BRCC. And the gap was so wide, Annette, I, Annette can tell you, she'd come over and scratch her head. The gap was so wide. Some of you have begun pay increases, whether you notice it or not. But incrementally, we have been adjusting your salary to bring you up for equity. No other college is doing that in the state, not one, but Baton Rouge Community College. <laughs> professional development. All of my vice president know that we're going to invest in professional development. So if a trip you want to go, I wouldn't say necessarily Hawaii, unless you got a strategic reason why you want to go Hawaii, but we're going to invest in professional development. Hopefully that you're going to present and showcase the value that you provide to Baton Rouge Community College and bring that work back and show people what we are doing. We're going to invest in professional development. Tuition, tuition reimbursement. BRCC never provides tuition reimbursement from a Catholic city. We gave you release time off. Now we're going to put our money where our mouth I see you up there, Valencia. Now we're going to put our money where our mouth at, that if you have a desire to get an advanced degree, we're going to pay for it. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Some of you been emailing me, asking. I just said, wait for a minute. Then I said, Dante, wait for a minute. It's coming. It's the right thing to do. You come and you sweat and you cry. And you do a whole bunch of stuff on the job beyond that. But we need to be invested back in you. Employees that customers. We got to do the work. You got to do the work. Why not invest back in you? Corner don't like that, so be viable. <laughs> student, let me talk about student for a minute. So we, we got a consultant group that's going to come in by the name of student. They have been helping some other colleges. And the whole idea of student is to help us around several things. One is to develop a strategic plan that involves all of you. So students are going to be coming in in the next few weeks and months to talk about how we better support our employees from a high performer to a low performer. I'll talk about that in a second. We already developed with Dr. Jones' leadership. She, we started, some of you guys being on the steering committee with all of the vice president, Dr. Bolo and Dr. And Corlin, to talk about who need to be on those committees. And I don't want their favor on the committee. I want people down in the trenches on those committees. And we already reached out to many of you about being on that steering committee. And that, that committee is about engaging us to some work on how we better serve the community, but how we better serve you guys. You're going to get to talk about it and develop that survey that's going to go out on all the things that we're not doing right, but how we get better, how we improve low performer to high performer. That's going to be a challenge, and that's going to be a caveat, and I want to be the first one to admit, after student work has concluded, or were they going to be with us through the duration, or maybe three to five year period, during that time, we're going to be evaluating leadership depth, who's the next up and coming leader, what role the college can provide for that leader, but also high performers and low performers. If you happen to be a low performer, it's okay. We're gonna work with you to get you where you need to be a high performer. But after the work has been done, there's gonna be some com difficult conversations that we're gonna make because everyone's gonna be invested in this and I wanna make sure those folks who are doing the work are rewarded as such. That could be all of us, but we got to make sure that's the honor system and we're doing the right thing. So students are going to come in and help us with that strategic planning process and our, and, our, and, our, and our strategic plan as we move forward. I'm so excited about the work they're going to do. I'm so excited, meaningful, I'm so excited on what you guys got to say that I have gotten wrong or my team have gotten wrong here on how we can be better. Don't bother me one bit, but if you ask some of my vice chancellors, they probably be nervous. But, <laughs> but it's okay. Because failure is not an option for me. I never allow failure to creep in my manifest in my being. I want to be better. I want to strive to be better. I'm competitive. And I'm a fighter. So help me be better as a better chancellor. Our vice president be better by presidents. 
our directors, our deans, our assistant vice president, be better vice president, and all of you. And you can see the work that we're going to do across this state and across this country to recognize the work that we're doing. Finally, an employee value proposition. Now, we give a value proposition that we give out to our building industry partners on the value that we provide for economic impact to the amount of money that our students make. But I need a value proposition for my employees. What makes you want to come up, get out of bed every day, and come to work at BRCC? How can I bottle that proposition and sell that to other people who want to come to BRCC? So once the strategic work starts happening, we will be doing a value employee a value proposition to be able to talk about the great work that BRCC is doing. Why? We say it, but we're really going to know now why BRCC is a great place to work. Folks, that's my investment back into you. That's the challenge that I have and the team have, but you have, and we're going to do that together. There's going to be some naysayers and some gospel who ain't going to believe it, but just look the other way, hold your head high, and keep walking. Because at the end of the day, everybody throws stones, but nobody lives in a glass house. We made mistakes, we can be better, and we're going to do better. But the value proposition is going to allow us to really reflect on how we can better serve you as employees and customers. We are the difference makers, each one of you. Point to your neighbors and say, we are the difference makers. That's right. We are. I didn't say I. I didn't say them. We are. We are the different makers. And I'm going to leave you guys with this, and I'm going to get to the celebration. One of my heroes, one of the favorite quotes that I have always lived by, and my daddy have taught me, life's most, persistent, most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? If we don't take this opportunity to learn from what we went through the COVID and beyond COVID, to change, to lead, to do better, but more importantly, help each other. Those words don't mean anything. But I implore you to join me on celebrating all our success and accomplishment, putting those behind with, with, with many more to go. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed your convocation. Look forward to continuing to work for all of you. Appreciate it.